Well, if 2020 has brought us anything, it's that we're all on the edge of our seats, waiting for the next shoe to drop. But our next guest says life is in these transitions. Bruce Filer is one of America's most popular voices on the role of spirituality in contemporary life. He's a speaker, presenter of two primetime series, and best-selling author of The Secrets of Happy Families, creator of Council of Dads, Walking the Bible, and his latest book, Life is in the Transitions. Bruce Feiler, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Your new book talks about mastering change at any age. Many of us fear change. Some of us appreciate it. And 2020 is a year of unwanted, unwelcome changes. What are your findings during this time of great angst for many of us? Well, we are in this kind of period that I call a life quake, which is a period, as you said, of massive change that has aftershocks that last for years. And I got interested in these periods, as you know, because I went through a life quake of my own a few years ago. First, I got cancer as a new dad. Then I almost went bankrupt. And my dad, who has Parkinson's, tried to take his own life. And in the wake of that, I kind of was sort of looking for wisdom out there about how to navigate these times. And I couldn't really find the book that was speaking to me about these moments when life comes at us from all ways. And so I set out on this journey, crisscrossing you know, North America, collecting stories of people in you know all corners um, of this continent, people who had lost limbs, lost homes, changed careers, changed religions, got sober, got out of bad marriages. And then I spent a year kind of combing through these, trying to find patterns that could help all of us in times of change. And so to your question, I would say that the big idea that emerged from this is that the idea of a linear life, mm -hmm. that we're gonna have one home, one job, one relationship, one source of happiness from adolescence to assisted living, like that's gone. And it's been replaced by what I call a non-linear life, which has many more twists and turns, ups and downs, these life quakes as we've been talking. And these involve going through transitions. And so my book unveils the first new model for how to navigate these times in 40 years. And I just got to say that I worked on this book for half a decade and it arrived at this moment when the entire planet is going through a life transition at the same time. Wow, talk about timing, right? As you, <laughs> exactly. as you alluded to, COVID-19 has kind of been this great leveler. Every one of us yeah. is impacted by it. Tell us about the constant disruptors that you write about in your book. Disruptors are kind of small changes and we're pretty good at navigating those, but one in 10 becomes a life quake. And these last you know, three or four years, it takes most of us to get through the transitions. And if you think about it, you know, three to five in a lifetime, four to five years, that's half of our adult lives we spend in transition. That's why this book is called Life is in the Transitions, because if you just look at these as periods to kind of grit and grovel our way through, you're missing this opportunity for growth and renewal. And so basically what I found is that when you first get into these moments, they feel overwhelming, like you're stuck, and you're never going to get through it. But if you look at enough of them, certain patterns become clear. So for example, life transitions involve three phases. There's the long goodbye where you have to say goodbye and kind of mourn the old you. There's this messy middle where you have to shed certain habits and create new ones. And then this new beginning um, in which you, know, you unveil the new self. And we're, we all tend to be good at one of these phases and bad at one. So my advice is to people figure out, are you good at the goodbye? Are you good at the middle? start there, build some confidence, and then go to the parts that might be more difficult. That's, that's great advice. In your PBS special, Walking the Bible, you say that the Bible is not an abstraction. It's probably mm. impossible to narrow down. Uh, but what did walking w the way of the ancients bring to light most of all for you? I mean, so what I found in many years, going back and forth to the Middle East and writing books and making television is that you know, that the, the story, I, I see the Bible not as a book, but as a map, but as places that you can go. And the story is in effect about the relationship between you know, God and the people of the, and the land. And if you take any of those out, you kind of miss the point of it. And I think there's an interesting actually parallel here between my experience walking the Bible 
and talking about life transitions, because if you think about the great moments in the biblical story, whether it's Abraham leaving his family's house and going to the promised land, right? The Israelites leaving Egypt and going into the wilderness, the Jerusalemites going by the rivers of Babylon, you know, Jesus into the desert or Paul on the road to Damascus. These are all stories of these journeys into difficult times, but that's when the great breakthroughs occur in the ancient stories, whether it's the scriptural stories or Odysseus or Jason and the Argonauts or Hercules. These are all stories of going through difficult times, but finding growth and strength and renewal. And I think that there's a reason that these are the oldest stories out there, because they still have lessons uh, for us today as we go into this kind of wilderness difficulty, this period of into the woods, if you will. Yeah, and in light of your historical pilgrimage through the Bible and study of the world's three major religions, how do you think humankind today is handling this pandemic? We like to think of our stories as a fairy tale, yeah. right? There's a hero and there's a happy ending. But the truth is, what makes it a fairy tale? And the answer is it's the wolf. <laughs> that somewhere along the road, a wolf or an ogre or a dragon um, appears. And we might want to banish the wolf, but you can't banish the wolf because if you banish the wolf, you banish the hero. Mm. And so what have I learned? What's the most valuable lesson from all of these stories is each of us should be the hero of our own story. So in a way, kind of what I'm saying to people out there, if you were lying awake last night, worrying about some aspect of your life or got up this morning with a cup of coffee and were staring out the w window, wondering what's going to happen to you or your family, I was where you are right now. And I went out and met people who were frankly were far worse. So if you come on this journey with me into these woods, into the wilderness, I'm gonna give you things to do tonight, tomorrow, next week, a month after, that will allow you to make whatever transition you're in go a little bit better. You can get through the wolves, you can get through the wilderness, each of us needs to be the hero of our own story. And basically in COVID-19, add a new chapter. Mm -hmm. It says, I went through a difficult time, but I got through it uh, and now I'm ready to move forward for whatever's to come next. Thank you for that. The reminder of our resiliency as human beings. Thank you so much, Bruce Feiler, author, speaker, and filmmaker. Thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. We'll get through this, everybody.